tonight, turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter number 33 tonight. Exodus chapter number 33. Went home this evening and I began to pray just right after we'd gone home and began to ask God for his direction for tonight's service. I just felt like the Lord wanted us to preach tonight from where we're going to preach from here. Uh, about a very special thing that God has given to you and I, and that's His presence. Ladies and gentlemen, we should never, ever take that for granted, the presence of God, because I can do nothing without Him. But the Bible says that all things are possible, truly are possible to those which will believe. So with Him, we can face anything. Ex <clears throat> I'm sorry tonight. Exodus 33, verse number 7. And it says, And Moses took the tabernacle, and he pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and he called the tabernacle of the congregation... And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass that when Moses went out into the tabernacle, that all of the people rose up, stood every man at his tent door, and he looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. It came to pass that as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and they worshipped every man in his tent door would you pray with me tonight Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for this privilege and opportunity that we have tonight to come one more time and to break the bread of life I pray God tonight that you would speak not only to us but God through us and Lord, we glorify you and we magnify you. We can do nothing tonight, God, without you. I pray, Lord, your glory in this place tonight, God, touching lives here across this building. And we glorify you and magnify you in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. Praise the Lord. It said, Moses took the tabernacle and he pitched it without the the camp uh, far off from the camp and he called the tabernacle of the congregation and it said and it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord and notice that said went out into the tabernacle of the congregation was without the camp and it came to pass the Bible said that when Moses went out into the tabernacle that all of the people arose and they stood in their tent door they knew that now their leader now Moses was the leader of the children of Israel had brought them out of exile from Egypt land Moses had went down at the command of God and delivered the people out he was the one that they went to when they had a problem now you talk about a stress load we hear a lot about that and I talk about it a lot myself but now you talk about a stress that this man was under he's got the care of all of these people now that's came out of Egypt land he's 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 taking care of them as they go along Long. Now Moses has gone out to the tabernacle now to meet with God and as he goes out the men and they arise and they stand in their tent door and they watch as Moses goes out they see him go in now to the tabernacle of God and a cloudy pillar the Bible said begin to descend and rest upon that at that point the children of Israel knew that God was meeting with Moses there now here is a here is a group of people that knew God's presence. They knew what it was like. They had saw God provide for them. Their clothes never wore out 40 years. They wandered in the desert. Moses, Moses talked to God and God provided for them. He gave them water from a rock. He rained manna from heaven. He gave them a pillar of a cloudy pillar by day and a fire by night. And Saint of God, I begin to think about it. here's a group of people that saw so much of God's majesty and so much of God's glory, how could they have acted and done the way that they done? But they done it anyway. But God loved them. Moses obeyed the 
command of God and God's presence was with him. I want you to think about that. God's presence was with Moses because of his obedience to the voice of God. He was a meek man and one that was tame to the voice of God. God could speak something to his heart and Moses would obey what God said to his heart. But I begin to read on. Moses was one that when God spoke to him on the backside of a desert, he's out there taking care of his father-in-law's sheep and God said to Moses, he came to a burning bush and he stood there because of the one reason it wasn't uncommon in the desert for a bush to be burned but it was never consumed and Moses stopped to see the sight. Here's a bush that's been on fire but it's never been consumed in the fire. Moses stopped in the side of that and he stood there and immediately God said to him he said Moses take your shoes off for the place where you stand is holy. Then he began to tell Moses I've got a people in Egypt that I want you to bring out. They're under the hand of Pharaoh. I want you to go down and bring them out. Moses realized that he couldn't do that by himself. He said God I can't speak. I can't, I've got a speech impairment. I can't do it. God said Moses I'll fix your speech impairment. I'll send your brother Aaron with you. He's going to do the talking and you're going to do the leading. I want you to go down there and bring my people out. But Moses realized that he could never do anything without the same presence that was in that burning bush. Moses realized that I've got to have the presence of God in my life. Now listen to me church. How can we be anything without him? We can't. Amen. If Moses had to have it and he did and God's glory was there with him. I want to read something to you here from our chapter, our text chapter tonight and it's verse 8 Here's a man of God that loves the Lord and he sought the face of God. But listen to what he says in verse 18 of Exodus 33. And he said, I beseech thee. He said, show me thy glory. Amen. Moses asked of God to see his glory. Moses said to God, I want to see you in your glory and your power. I begin to think about that. That's just the human nature of man. But church, I would to God that we'd get a hunger like Moses had again. Moses said, God, can I just see you? Can I have your presence again? Can I have that glory again? Moses was wanting to fellowship with God more and more. And the word of God says, you can read on there. And I did. I preached this. I don't know how long ago it's been. But I went back today and I looked at it and I'd underlined some very special things there on over further in the book of Exodus God said to Moses he said I'll hide you in a cliff I'm going to hide you there and I'll put you in that cliff and he said and I'll pass by you there in the cliff of that rock and that's exactly what God done he put Moses in the cliff of the rock and he passed by him there and he said in verse number let me read this here in verse number 21 and the Lord said said, behold, there is a place by me. Now, I want you to notice that. He said, there is a place by me. He said, thou shalt stand up on a rock. Now, I got to thinking about that again. I'd underline some things all around this here. We're mountain people here. We know what a cliff is. A cliff's a solid rock. I mean, it's a place of solid rock. It's a bluff. That's a cliff. But he said, there is what by me? There is a rock by me. Amen. I look at that and I've preached this before that rock was Christ you can read that in the New Testament tonight that rock that followed them to the desert land that provided water for them when the children of Israel needed water they said to Moses we're going to die out here in the midst of this desert we're going to die here but God's glory was in their midst God said to Moses smite the rock and Moses done that and the Bible tells us that he, when he did when he smoked the rock, the waters gushed out. That's the only time that God commanded Moses to smite the rock. From that point on, he was to speak to it. You realize that? From then on, he was to speak to the rock, but we realize he failed, got messed up, and he smote it twice, and he faced judgment for that right there. He faced 
the wrath of God over that. Listen to me, child of God. When God spoke to him and gave him the direction that he was to obey, God said, I will provide for you. I want you to realize something tonight. It's important to you and I to realize how important it is to have the presence of God in our life. Manna rained down for the children of Israel as they obeyed God. It's important for you and I to have communion with God. It's important for you and I to fellowship in his presence. It's important for you and I to experience God's glory. There's a world of people out there that go through this thing and they've never experienced God's glory in their heart and in their life. They've been around it a while. They've seen things. They've heard. They've been in the pre- they've been around that. But they themselves have never pressed through to the place where God's glory was. They've heard mom talk about it. They've heard granny talk about it. They've heard others. But they themselves have never touched the throne of heaven. They've never been in that place where Moses was when he said to God, I want to see you. I can tell you, friend, if we get hungry like that, God's presence is still real tonight. Amen. God's still on the throne of heaven tonight. He's still moving in the lives of men and women that will press their way in and say, God, I've got to have you. Moses said, I want to see you. And his glory was there in such a place. I love this. When his, when Moses, when God had passed by and he looked, when God had passed by Moses, Jesus just saw the hinder parts of God as he passed by. The Bible said that his face began to glow. I'm going to tell you something, friend. The presence of God will change a man every time. Amen. It'll make you what you were not. When you've been in the presence of God, doesn't life seem different? Amen. When you've got down and you've prayed in earnestness and God's moved and heaven's reigned in your soul, brother, you can rise up and face the things that life has to throw at you. Brother, sister, we live at a time right now when people are weakened by the force of the enemy and the tactics of hell and they wonder how can I get through another day? Oh, brother, sister, get in a place alone with God and say, God, may I see you today in my life. Can I have your glory, God, to move and your presence rain down in my heart and my life? I can tell you, friend, it'll make a difference in your life and in my if we'll just say, God, I need you right now. I need your glory tonight more than I need another breath of air. More than I need food and raiment and a shelter over my head. I need to be in the presence of the living God that the power of heaven would move and reign in my soul, God. That I could feel your glory one more time. That heaven would move and that things would be different. Hallelujah. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. This is for real tonight. This is for real. This is not a fantasy land that we live in, but it's a real place that God still moves in hearts and lives of people that desire him. But I can assure you tonight, he will not just flood his presence over you if you do not desire him. You can look in Revelation and he said, Behold, I stood at the, Jesus stood at the door and knocked and he said, If any man would do what? Would open the door. He said, I'll come in to him and sup with him. He's standing on the outside knocking to come in. You never find where he opened the door and just went in. But if a man would open that door, he said, I will come in. Amen. You want the glory of God in your life. I'm going to tell you what you need to do and what I need to do and what we'll have to do. And that's open the door and say, God, I desire you. Now, for whatever reason, we, we live in a time and seemingly right now where this is old fashioned. It seems like to the world out there in face and fast paced society that this has become out of date. But friend, it never came out of date. It's never got to the place that it's not needful because it is more needful now than it's ever been because we're living in the end time. It took the presence of God 
in the lives of the disciples. I, I heard a guy the other day on the radio preaching and, and I, I thought about this as he said that. I thought, Lord, how many times have I said that very same comment right there that that brother just made? And he was talking about the disciples as they went out and began to preach and teach and he said, and they turned this world upside down. I thought, God, I've said that so many times, but ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what they done. They turned this world upside down with the preaching, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. They began to preach him crucified and risen from the dead. They said, we've given eyewitness account to the things that we saw on Calvary. We've given you an eyewitness account of what happened to us in the upper room. He's still God. Amen. I can tell you, friend, they prayed due to the power of heaven reigned in their soul and you and I tonight need to do the exact same thing. Amen. When we could give an eyewitness account to the world and say, I was there the night that God moved. I was there in that place when heaven rained down and the glory of God filled that place again. The children of Israel didn't have to take a vote as to see what had happened around the tabernacle door. That night they saw the cloudy pillar come down. Oh church, I would to God that the people of Jasper, Arkansas could see a cloudy pillar one more time hover over the house of God that they would realize that the power and that the glory of God has begun to move in the house one more time and that God's presence is there. Brother, that we don't got to put it on a shirt. We don't got to advertise it on the radio. We don't got to make up a logo. But that the cloudy pillar of the presence of the almighty God of heaven would be evident in the midst of his people and in the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, glory. They didn't take a vote to see how many agreed is this is what's going on over there. No, sir. The cloudy pillar hovered over that tabernacle and they knew what was going on there. They knew God's meeting with him there. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something. That's more than a corporate level. That needs to be an individual level and a desire of our life every day that we live to pray through to that place in this thing where God moves in our life every day. Amen. His blessings, His mercy, His grace, His anointing, His rich, it's rich every day. Amen, folks, and it's there for you and I today. It'll be there if we have tomorrow. It'll be there for in tomorrow if we'll press our way through to the throne of God and allow God to move in our heart and our life. God's presence will be in the midst if we'll desire him, if we'll seek his face, if we'll look for him. Friend, we'll find him. Those that seek him, find him. Those that hunger are fed. Those that are thirst receive a drink. Amen. And brother, sister, it's the same. He's no respecter of person. What he done for one generation, he will do for this generation. I've got news for you. This generation of people here in the book of Exodus, I'm sorry that we're reading from tonight. This generation of people here, they saw what God could do. Amen. They saw what God could do. He's provided for them manna, which was the substance that they needed to live. He provided for them quail. They desired meat. He gave them the desires of their heart. He gave them the meat. They desired it. They had all of it that they wanted. He gave them the water that they desired. That water came from that rock that followed them. In the New Testament, as I said earlier, the New Testament said that rock was Christ. Amen. He gave them everything that they needed. They saw that. That generation saw that with their eye. They saw the cloudy pillar descend down on the tabernacle as Moses entered in. They saw his face when he came back from the cleft of the rock. They saw every bit of that. But friend, there wasn't nobody had to tell them about that. They saw saw that with their eye but yet they walked away from the things of God 
God. Yet that generation is the same one that went to Canaan land and said we cannot defeat the giant. I can tell you brother, sister, we need to maintain a relationship with God where our faith level is built upon him and not something else over there, all right? Where our faith is built upon Christ and Christ alone. I can tell you, friend, he is the solid rock. And if you're building upon him, it'll stand through the ceaseless ages of time. Build upon that foundation, brother, and it'll never let you down. But if you build upon anything else, it's sinking sand. They built upon that food. Look, but when they came to Canaan land, the spies go in to Canaan. They came back. Joshua and Caleb said, we can take this land. We can have it. It's ours. But the others said, no, we can never have it. And that generation of people kept the whole generation out. That group of spies kept the whole generation of people out. Why? Because of unbelief. Unbelief cost them everything that they had went forward to receive. And it, if it done it for them, you can rest assured that it'll do it for you and I. They put their faith in what the others had said rather than what they had known that their God was able to do. They had, they had come to the place, friend, of not relying upon God like they had in the past. Whoa. And that can get easy to do. What happened? They become complacent. Well, we'll always have Moses. We'll always have a leader that'll hear from God. We'll always have somebody that'll go to the tabernacle and the presence of God will be there. They become dependent upon that rather than experiencing it for themselves. I, I don't I never understood why they didn't go to the tabernacle and have the presence of God in their life. Why they didn't desire to have God to move. Oh friend, when we get to that place, we got to realize something. Our faith comes by faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when we put our faith in what God's done for you and I, then we can put our faith in something that will not move. It will not be shaken. Why? Because it's been an account in our life that God has moved, God has worked, God has performed, and God will provide. Amen. Amen. Just as he always has. Ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing to me to see what God has done. And not only to see what God has done, but to know what God will do. We need the glory of the Lord in our heart and in our life. Listen to some scripture here about the glory of God. In Exodus 24 and 17, and it said, And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. In Exodus 40 and 34, and it said, And the cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. First Kings... <coughs> <coughs> At 1 Kings 8 and 11, he says, So that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Yes. And Psalm 19 and 1 said, For the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his, his handiwork. Ladies and gentlemen, the glory of God is what we need more than anything else in our life. It will sustain you and I through the hardships that we face in this life. And I think tonight as I stand before you, many of you live for God. You've prayed. You saw God move. You saw God's glory. You saw the things in this, in this life come and go. But you realize this. I couldn't have made that had it not been for the Lord. There's some of you been through some things and maybe even going through some things right now. You realize that I couldn't have handled that. I wouldn't have, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have something to turn to, someone to turn to. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. We can turn to him at any hour.
lot of times that I've maybe wanted to call somebody and I'd look at the clock and I'd say I can't call them now. Been a lot of times I've got up out of my recliner and I lose, sometimes I lose concept of time miss. Say you can't call them. It's 10.30 or it's 10 o'clock at night. You can't call now. And I think about that and then I'll change my mind and not do it. But aren't you glad tonight that we can go talk to God at any hour? Aren't you glad that when those sleepless nights come and nobody's there, you can get alone with God and know that he's in your midst. You can feel his divine presence and the Shekinah glory of heaven as God just begins to move in your midst. Oh, brother, sister, don't ever let that go. Don't ever lose that right there. Maintain that relationship. Maintain that desire to have God's glory more than anything else. The children of Israel sought God and God moved. They saw Moses as he moved in the presence of God, but still as they saw all of these things, their heart was fixed on the things that was in Egypt and doubt filled into their life. Amen. And doubt kept them out from a land that kept a generation out from a land that God had promised them that was theirs. Coming to a close tonight, what's kept you and I out from the things that God has promised to us? He's got a storehouse full of blessings tonight. But what's been the thing that's kept you and I from inheriting or inhabiting the place that God's given us? I'm confident tonight, church, God has levels for us to move up in and never backward in, but always moving up in the things of God. And we move up in God through faith. We move in the things of God in a faith realm. And many people never go beyond the first stage or the first rung of the ladder because of fear and doubt and unbelief. The children of Israel sat on the outside of the gate of Cana, always desiring what's on the other side, always thinking about what God had promised them, yet they stood on the other side of the thing, never pressing their way into what God had for them. Always that was there. They were only on the first rung of the ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, God had so much more for them as he does for you and I tonight if we desire that. All that they would have had to have done is said, we can have the land. We can have it. God promised us that. God told us that. We've heard that from our leader from the last 40 some odd years in this desert land, this wilderness process. We've heard that. We're going in. We didn't come this far to just sit on the outside, on the outskirts of town and not have the blessings of God. Ladies and gentlemen, may we get the mentality that Lord, I'll not let let you go like Jacob of old. May we get that mentality that I'll not let you go until you have blessed me. I'll not let you go until the power and the glory of God has reigned in my soul. I will not let God go at this time nor any other time because I need him. Doubt kept the children of Israel out but faith will push you forward. You do realize that faith will always challenge you to move forward in the things of God. It'll challenge you and I to live a holier life that's close to Jesus Christ. It'll challenge you and I to live godly in Christ Jesus. It'll challenge you and I to crucify the flesh. It'll challenge you and I to pray. It'll challenge you and I to read the word of God. And when we exercise that faith and say, God, I accept the challenge. I'll take that into my life. We'll move up in the things of God and the blessings of God and the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith always shoves you forward to do the things of God. Yes. People sit back and say, oh, I could never do that. I could never have that. 
I could never live in that realm. Unbelief's what kept the children of Israel from experiencing what God had for them. As it will for you and I, if we, if we develop that type of, of mentality in our mind, when you develop that type of mentality or that type of thinking, you'll be defeated before you ever go to the fight. Amen. Because you've come to the realization, oh, I could never, I could never do that. You've left out one factor, your help. Amen. Your helper's already been there. He's already, got the, he's already got the victory won. He's just waiting now upon you. Faith will always push you forward to do the things of God and to do what's right. Challenges you and I to live like God would have us to do. Why would He? Why? Because it develops a relationship. Develops a relationship with you. You take a you take a, a, a marriage relationship between husband and wife when they're in love with one another and they've lived together for a period of time. They're stronger after years go by than they are when they first started. Why is that? Because of that relationship that that has built over that course of time. That love relationship between them has been there for years to come, and God's just moved in their heart and in their life and stronger. Relationship between you and God grows when you exercise your faith in what He asks you to do. When God says go, and you go. God says, I'll bless you there. And you get there and you see the blessings. I'll never forget. I share something with you tonight and I'm coming to a close. I'll never forget when God called us to pastor our first church. I'd been preaching for some time, a few years then. I'd been preaching and we was preaching at a lot of different churches and just, just praying and interceding and talking to God and seeking God's direction and just what God would have us to do. And been praying about that and, and we'd been going and, and, and preaching out at, at Compton there uh, at, the, at the last church that we was at and, and uh, just talking to God and praying and God began to deal with me about that and I thought, God... You know, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know that if I can handle that. But I, I said, God, you know so much greater than I do. You know so much better than I do about this. And I will trust you with that. I wrestle with it for a while. I put it off for quite some time. I, I just really didn't want to be a pastor. I just, I'd obey God. I'd preach. I said, God, whatever you want, I'll do that. But I just, just don't know that I can handle the responsibility of that. And I was praying, talking to God, and God wouldn't leave me alone. He wouldn't leave me alone at all about that. And I thought, God... This has got to be your will. I thought, Lord, I'll, I'll put it out there and we'll do that if that's what you want. Ladies and gentlemen, we went there. We were talking, Zach, we were talking about this around the, the lunch table today about when we went there and started pastoring that, that little church there on the mountain and God began to move and how God began to work there and, and the blessings of the Lord and all those things. But I want you to know something. God challenges you and I to live close to Him. Because he desires for us to push our way in to the things of God. He has something for us. He has something for us if we'll be obedient to the voice of God. He had something for Moses in the tabernacle of the congregation. He had that. It was his glory. He had something for him in the cleft of the rock. It was his glory. You can look and see how Moses moved up in the things of God. But also as he moved, the children of Israel would move his well but yet Moses grew closer and they grew further how can that be preacher because they depended more upon Moses doing it than them doing it themselves and there's where we get in trouble well Moses will do the praying for us Moses will do the interceding for us and they grew weaker in the things of God Ladies and gentlemen, it's our responsibility to maintain this relationship with God. 
It's our responsibility. My wife, it's not her responsibility to maintain my relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not my responsibility to maintain for her. I can't, nor can she. But it's a personal thing that we have. If we want God's glory, I want you to know something tonight. You can have it. Amen. You can have it. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Heads is bowed and eyes is closed across this place. Musicians, if you would help me tonight. <clears throat> In this part of our service, we're going to come to a close. Here tonight before my voice quits me. our responsibility as men and women of God to have what God has for us. I want you to know something tonight, young people. God has some things for us that we can experience. You say, well, I'm just a kid. I'm just a young person. God's got something for you. Don't ever let the enemy rob you of that, the things that God has for you. Take his preacher's advice. You will never regret living for him. There's a lot of young people that won't live for God because they're afraid of what they're going to have to give up and what they're going to have to quit and what they're going to have to leave behind. But now listen to me. You'll never regret living for Jesus Christ. I've never regretted a day of it. I've never regretted a day of that night on January the 17th. I believe in 1991. I bowed my head and I asked Jesus Christ into my life. I've never, never regretted that choice that I made. What a difference He's made in our lives. What a difference. It's His presence. It's His presence. Oh, folks. could only see I've got some friends tonight that I've had all my life if they could just see what a difference his presence makes I can tell you the things that they're holding on to will look tarnished to them the thing that they think may be golden unto them will be tarnished in the sight of an almighty God. If they can only see that, God may open their eyes. God may you open their eyes. You're all that they need. I wonder tonight across this building if there'd be one person. You may be sitting in this house tonight and you're not right with God and you know that. But you want to make that right with Him. You want your life to be hidden, Christ. You want to start this thing out tonight. You want to turn your life over to Him. Come on, this altar's open tonight. My friend, this altar's open tonight. If they be one man, one woman, one boy, one girl, she'd say, God, I just need you in my life. Here's your chance. Now then, church, may the Holy Ghost just stir us again. May we be the powerful spiritual men and women that God desires for us to be. It takes the presence of the Holy Ghost. It takes the power of heaven in our soul. May God move in our life again. 
If you can tonight across this building, would you find your place in this altar and let's spend some time with God. God, change us, mold us, make us like you want us to be, God, that we have your presence. Would you join me tonight and let's find us a place and spend some time with God. Hallelujah.